you put it in such a make sense, like no BS type of way. I like the way that you break things down. You know, I really have to thank you for that. It's so much different from so many of these other dating coaches. It helps a lot. Sick of sacrificing or settling in your romantic life? Welcome to Make Him Wonder with Coach Paula Grooms, where women struggling in real relationships ask the expert. Unscripted, unfiltered, understandable coaching conversations to help passionate women succeed in love. Hi there, and welcome to Make Him Wonder. I'm your host, Coach Paula, a dating and relationship coach, licensed social worker, and author of the book, Why Won't He Commit? How a Man Decides to Make You the One. My guest today is 33-year-old Rachel, who is involved with 45-year-old Neil. Rachel and Neil live in different cities and have been, quote-unquote, pining for each other for about seven years. Rachel feels that things are amazing when the two are together, but Neil sends many mixed messages, such as canceling just before meeting up, and saying things like long-distance relationships never work. After their most recent night together, Neil jumped out of bed, packed his stuff almost frantically, saying it had nothing to do with Rachel, and left. The following morning, he sent a text asking Rachel to hang out. Rachel responded, sure, what time? But an hour or so passed, whereby Neil sent another text saying that he didn't feel right and wouldn't be able to meet up, that things are out of his control and he wouldn't be able to move forward with any of this. Neil then blocked Rachel's number and also blocked her on social media, and Rachel wonders why a man would choose to detach before at least being courteous enough to be open about how he feels. Welcome, Rachel. Hi. Well, my goodness, this is quite a situation you have. My first question to you, yeah. How long has it been uh, since this occurred? Um, It's been about a month and a half or so. And have you heard from him since? No. So how are you doing with that? Um, I am very confused, so I don't know which way to go with it or how to think about it. Um, I'm just very confused about this. I've never been so confused before about anything. So, um, you know, it hurts. I mean, it hurts to think that somebody would do something like that, especially when nothing has been fulfilled. Um, But then there's also no closure. Everything just kind of lingering without a reason or an explanation. It's just it is what it is, I guess. So have you reached out to him in that month and a half? I did. I um, I had a business number that I had sent him a message from, um, and no reply. That was about a week ago. So um, I don't assume he would reply because of what happened. I just kind of wanted to make it clear of um, kind of where I stood. And because the situation is so different than anything I've ever experienced, and I really don't get the kind of player vibes from him. I'm not getting, you know, one-night stand kind of vibes at all. So for me, I feel this was a, a get, he was going through something, and almost embarrassed himself and it's easier to leave the situation, not have me included in whatever he's going in, block me. He's not very good at opening up and expressing his feelings. And so that's where I'm at a a fork in the road where do I kind of pursue him and let him know everything's okay or do I make him wonder? And how do I do that if that's the case? So I'm mm, wondering about the history and how you got to what you said you've 
seemingly been pining for each other for about seven years. How did you meet, and what has been that history leading up to this last interaction? Okay, so our history, um, it's not, the whole history isn't very clear to begin with, especially because it is long distance. Um, we have never had an official title. He lives about three and a half or so hours away. So it's not too, too far long distance. It is traveling um, acceptable, I guess. It's, but it was a few years ago, uh, several years ago, um, I messaged him over Facebook, actually, and he responded, and we would message each other every couple days. Um, we ended up scheduling a meeting to hang out, so I went to where he lived, and we hung out, and it was a great night. Nothing happened. Um, you know, a kiss happened, and that was it. And then um, we kind of just kept in touch, flirting a little bit here and there, sending text messages or following each other on social media, leaving comments, things like that. Um, and then we made another, a year later, we hung out again. Again, I traveled to where he was at. Um, and um, we actually, you know, we had a fun night. Um, we've always felt really open with each other, very talkative, very playful. I mean, it would be like a perfect relationship if we lived together or lived in the same city at least. Um, a lot in common, kid-wise, I mean, music, politics, food, I mean, just the whole shebang. And there's never any awkwardness or tension, no matter how much time has passed. Um, and then after I left that visit, um, I had asked him through a text, so, you know, does this mean that we're dating? And he made it very clear that I'm somebody who would love to date, but due to the distance and long-distance relationships never working out, he doesn't see how it would be possible. So that was what I got from him. I took it at face value and continued on with my life. I had a couple of relationships in between, um, even posted to social media. Um, I have been in a very, very toxic um mentally abusive, going to physically abusive relationship, I ended up blocking Neil from social media, um, more so to save him from the drama because that's how my ex was, but Neil didn't know why he had been blocked and why the just sudden disconnection from my end. So once I ended that relationship and I came back around, I sent Neil an apology message um, through social media, and we kind of got back in touch, and we were messaging again, following each other again. He accepted the apology, and we've kind of continued this little touch-and-go thing. And then I got in another relationship, because I thought I was a just-for-fun girl for him, so we're just for fun, right? Um, got in another relationship. And then the, you know, messages and stuff, he, he was still trying to connect, and I told him it'd probably be best out of respect to my relationship to kind of pause it for a little bit. Um, and I feel like he kind of took that hard, and then everything just stopped. I mean, communication fully stopped because I was in a committed relationship um, where I ended up getting pregnant unexpectedly. So it was um, one thing leads to another, and... Um, well, that relationship has ended, so Neil and I visited each other again, and that's when this big thing happened now where we were hanging out, we went out to dinner, it was really nice. Uh, I mean, we just, we were jamming out in the car to music, we have so much in common still, it's unbelievable. We had a really nice, easy night, everything was relaxed and, um, you know, he had tried canceling on me before. We even got to that point, though, um, a couple months back, saying that he's working on himself and that, um, you know, it has nothing to do with me or our past, that he's just guarded. 
he's got a lot of things going on in his family and home life right now, um, and he's got like a medical condition. I didn't know the extent of it, um, and when he kind of jumped out of bed, he mentioned that he needs to take his medication, and so it. it it's just really confusing to me because I don't know. I mean, I believe him. I really do believe him. And that's what's hard is usually I would just cut ties and be done. I've never been in limbo like this. And um, so it, we haven't had the cleanest history. But to agree to hang out and I guess try to move forward with things, um, say he wants to talk about expectations, we never got to that point. He never even initiated that conversation. And just this happened. And so there's no talking about expectations or feelings or anything. So it's hard for me. Like, did he just decide he's completely done? Or is there really something else, something I should do? Or I'm just really kind of confused. Um, also, he's involved in something like in the entertainment industry a little bit, and they had a web page that you can order stuff from. And so my daughters really like what they do, their characters, like on a TV show. So um, she wanted to order some stuff, so I let her. And uh, he's one of the ones that packages the stuff and mails it out. And we received some um, extra stuff in there that we didn't purchase. So I know it was him, and I mentioned that in the text. So it's weird. That's a mixed message. Like, you're blocking me, and you want nothing to do with me. But here's some I'm thinking about you on the side kind of. I, I'm so confused. <laughs> Coach Paula, <laughs> what should I do? Well. Thanks for, for telling us all that. Yes, I, I do understand your confusion, and I'm going to clear that up for you today. This is a, a, a very tough situation for you. I understand that. I understand the feelings involved and how you are perceiving things as mixed messages. So let's start with a couple of questions that I bet my um, listeners will have. Certainly I do. What is going on, from, if you know, in terms of his relationship with somebody else that lives there? Uh, you mean like in the same city? Like does he have a relationship with somebody else? Is that what you're asking? Yes. As far as I know, he doesn't. He actually hasn't dated or gotten close to anybody because of his medical condition. That's what he specifically told me. Um, he does have a, like a, a baby monodrama kind of thing, but that was, I mean, his daughter is um, a teenager now. So that was a while ago. However, there is drama within that situation. Um, so, I mean, without giving out too many details, he is taking on more responsibility willingly um, because that's just the kind of guy he is. And at first, when we were hanging out, you know, I couldn't go, we couldn't meet, like, at his place necessarily because his ex was living with him still while she was trying to get on her feet and everything. So um, it is a complicated situation, um, but I, I've been in situations like that as well, living with an ex. It's hard for a woman who's dedicated time to raising a child to just get back on her feet. And sometimes relationships don't end because the men or women are horrible people, so you do need a little extra help. So I'm very understanding to those situations. I don't feel he has any sort of relationship. Um, I'm not naive enough to know that they never would happen or it's not a possibility, but as far as I know, that's the only one, and even that isn't 
um, there's other issues even with the, the mom that the only reason he's even having any contact with her is because she's the mother. Um, so I'm not going to give too many details away, but I do know that he wouldn't, it, it's not, that's not a viable relationship that would cause something like this. Um, and as far as dating elsewhere, I mean, I'm, like I said, I'm not naive enough to say no, never, but I just don't, it's, he's more of like a recluse. Like he just, he's not an extrovert at all. He's not one to really jump out there and make the first move. He's very family and work oriented and, you know, his kids are his life. So when he's not working, he's with them. And he had even mentioned to me that, um, you know, his daughter noticed my name in his phone. And they're like, who's that? Because they know of everybody in his life. And he kind of explained to them a little bit about who I was. Um, and then explained to them that we would be hanging out that night, too. And he never leaves them. So, you know, they had to digest it a little bit and get used to the fact that daddy was going out. Um, they had even FaceTimed him while we were out to say goodnight. <laughs> so, I mean... Uh, you know, he, he threw me his phone here, put some music on and then like nothing to hide. There was nothing. Um, that's why it's kind of, I mean, he wasn't, he doesn't talk about his emotions. I think he's more about actions, but as far as him having a relationship, I don't think he would have been as open and here's my phone if there was something going on. You know what I mean? And tell me, what do you know about this medical condition? Um, the medical condition, it's just a skin, not, I mean, I can't, it's not just a skin condition. It, um, it, it's psoriasis, so it, you know, it, it's a newer development for him. And I think at his age and being involved in the entertainment industry, there's a lot of different factors. And it, you know, it could be triggered by stress. Or um, you get, like, anxiety because you have it. So it's kind of like what came first, the chicken or the egg? Did stress cause it? Or are you getting stressed out because you have it? Nobody really knows. But I know with him, he was taking medication for it. Um, and he even says, like, he has anxiety. And he has to take anxiety medication, which we had drank some alcohol that night um, that he chose. But I, I, I feel like he was almost having, like, an anxiety attack at the end of the night. And I was kind of doing some research to see, you know, just to try to understand what was going on in the medical conditions and um, even the psyche parts of it, too. And they were saying that even when the alcohol starts metabolizing in your system, it'll cause the anxiety to kind of uh, worsen. Um, and that's that frantic. He packed almost frantically. Um, kind of reminded me of like the, the rabbit on Alice in Wonderland, you know, got to go, got to go. That's, he kind of reminded me of that in a way, but then he stopped and reassured me, this has nothing to do with you. And he's like, this has nothing to do with you. And like he slowed down for a second and then he left. So, yeah, and this was already, this was around like 3.30 in the morning. Had you had sex? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be giving you a really hard dose of reality, okay? Okay. And this is done because I believe that if you follow the logic here, and understand what it is that you are doing to hurt yourself. You won't be thinking ill of him because I know you 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 don't, and you know who he is. Mm -hmm. And it will help you to understand that when he tells you it's not you, he's being very truthful. So. How I can start this for you is from the beginning, because that's typically where we as women 
hurt ourselves and go wrong or the possibility of more with a man that we like. So we want to go back to the, the very beginning because if that had changed and you had not uh, had this interaction with him, it would possibly have saved you from a lot of uh, anguish and even heartbreak, correct? Yes. Yeah. So, you met him on Facebook somehow. How was that? Your friends of friends or something? How did you find him on Facebook? Um, I honestly don't remember exactly how he came up. I don't know if it was like a Facebook referral, like uh, somebody you might know, or if it was just clicking around, or what happened exactly. But yes, I found him on Facebook, but I recognized who he was from the, the um, show that my kids watch, and so I sent him a message. And mm -hmm. I think it's really cool that you're a... Just a, it wasn't even like a flirting message. I just thought it was really, for some reason, like I had some sort of pool. And I've never done that. It's one of those, I don't just randomly message people ever. So for me, it was different, but I just felt like it felt right for some reason. Um, okay. Yeah, so it, I messaged him, and then he messaged back, and we just, yeah, it was Facebook. I don't remember exactly how it came up. Okay. So... I want you to think of this in terms of, you know, he's someone on TV and pretty puppy, 12 years younger, reaches out to him. Of course, he's going to answer you back. And you then uh, continued going back and forth with him for about a year before you went to see him mm -hmm. and you went to him yes so you see from the very beginning what are you showing him um, that I'm willing to put more effort in that his time is more valuable than mine Yes, those things for sure. And most importantly, when a man doesn't do the work and pursuit, you already know something that is major. Does that make sense? Um, somewhat. Okay. So this is foundational that you must understand or you will continue to be confused by men. We don't have to be confused. We allow ourselves to be confused because of lack of knowledge. That's all. He showed you everything you needed to know from the beginning. Because here's how it could or would have been different from the very outset. Okay, he's on TV, you message him, and he is in a place of being a buyer, not a consumer. He would have done the pursuit, the going to. He's never made any effort towards you. He's only accepted what you have done. If you really look over the last seven years, that's what's occurred. He's accepted what you have done. That's not a man who is in the place of being a buyer. Now, here's what happens for all of us because we as women are love in the world. We embody relationships. 
You know my book, I talk about my three C's of women, three C's of men. Three C's of women, we are the connectors, cooperators, and caretakers of the world. We know relationships, and we in our minds will understand and incorporate all of someone, all of what's going on in his life, all of who he is and what he embodies. And we then have our story about them and we make um, sometimes excuses, but certainly we allow for things going on in their lives and we'll do whatever to make something work when we are in love. And that is what's happening here. The, there is no doubt in my mind that he is telling you the truth that this has nothing to do with you. Nothing. You are a pretty puppy that when you run up to him and want to be petted and give him licks and love, he will be accepting of it. But he is in no way even any possibility of ever adopting you, meaning as an exclusive relationship, as a girlfriend, and certainly not as more. Does that make sense? It does. I think I've just been confused because there's been so many variables. Um, mm -hmm. There's been, like, he's moving. He wants to move to a different state. Um, I don't, yeah, I mean, you're right. You're definitely right. I've been the one more of the pursuing. However, I've also been understanding as to why, I guess. Like, if he was out there dating and, you know, accepting other pretty puppies and petting them, it would be more well-rounded to understand. But he's not buying anybody. He's not even in a buyer's mentality. And um, I listened to your podcast before. I'm sorry. No. Rachel, you're kidding yourself. You are absolutely kidding yourself. Here's what is another scenario that you might understand about that night, okay? Oh. The reason I asked you, did you have sex before he got up, packed his stuff, had an anxiety attack, and left? You said yes. How was that encounter? Was it, quote-unquote, normal? Um, what, I don't understand. Like, what do you mean? The sex what, what that you mean? had. Was it normal? You two were both naked. Um, you had a normal sexual encounter, or was it strange? Well, did he stay with T-shirts on and uh, hiding himself? Oh. And What was it like? No, it was, nor it was normal. Okay. Now, you're at a hotel, I assume? Yes. Okay, you're at a hotel. You, pretty puppy Rachel, 33, comes to him, 45-year-old Neil, with his uh, one child. His life is there. He's had a full life there. And you're in a hotel. You said to me something that... Um, Going out with him, you had to be careful. Is that true? Um, no, like when we go out and about, we're not careful. Um, you mean like hiding kind of careful? Mm -hmm. No, actually. Um, no, he has two daughters also, um, but one is not biologically his. That's part of the, the details I didn't really want to have oh. to disclose everything, but mm -hmm. um, they are sisters biologically, just not his. He, he's he is the father, just not biologically. Um, so they're the adopted drama. children. I don't understand. No, no that it's confusing. Uh, that's um, there's so many variables. It's really, but no, it's 
his um it's his ex's child that she had with somebody else. She's not in a very good situation, and he apparently is in prison. So this guy, being the guy that he is, stepped up to the plate, and he's been there since day one. That's his daughter's sister. That, I mean, he's not. Uh, it's it's a crazy. Uh, okay, I got you. It's okay. a lot. It's confusing. Um, he's telling me some more details. But I don't want to give too much. It doesn't. It um, doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah. matter. None of this matters. You're making it matter. Okay. 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 Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because of just what I said, you, with your wonderful female brain and heart, are giving this all manner of meaning for the wonderful guy that he is. And I'm here to throw some cold water on it. Doesn't mean he's bad. Doesn't mean he's evil. He is quite confused himself, completely at emotional odds and toil, and he is a somewhat troubled man. You say he's an artist, musician or something? Yes. He has that artist soul about him. You've probably not felt that connected or passionate about other men. Mm -hmm. That's the artist's soul, the passion in him, the depth, his ability to connect to you. And you are making all kinds of mm, excuses for the behavior, but because you know that he has a good soul. You know that he is a good man. He's just troubled, tries to do well. And you're giving him all kinds of outs that only hurt you. And here's what I want you to understand. What has he done since he decided that's it? For Rachel. Nothing. No, he's done a lot. He decided that's it for Rachel because it's not good for my life. And I don't want you to have any doubt about this, and I know you do. But this is about another relationship. It is a classic after sex with you He has an anxiety attack and has to leave frantically, saying it has nothing to do with you. He's right. Here's what happened the following day. I'm going to give you a different scenario that you can hold on to, okay? Okay. He sends you a text asking you to hang out the following morning because he knows you're there and he left you in the middle of the night without any explanation other than it's not you. He's a, he's a decent man. In other words, he's not a sociopath, so he has guilt about that. Don't you think he had guilt? Yes. Absolutely. So what happened? How did he send you the text? Or how long was it? So we had our encounter, and then we actually got settled into bed. We were putting on TV shows and making jokes, and um, as the night progressed, it was, uh, he ended up, like, turning to the side of the bed, and I got up to the bathroom, turned to the side of the bed. It was, like, hugging a pillow. It was weird. Um, We were kind of laying there, and then... He jumped up, and um, that was about 3.30, and then it was around 9.30, I would say, in the morning. Like, 9.30 is when he sent me a text. I said good morning back a few minutes later, and then he put hang out, and I put sure what time, and then like an hour passed, and then I called him, and it rang all the way through, um, and then probably 30 minutes later is when... He sent the message about us not 
uh, he wouldn't be able to hang out. He's sorry for wasting my time. He didn't feel right. These are things that are out of his control. Um, and before I could block, or I mean, before I could respond, he blocked me. I mean, it was just like instant. Like he sent the message and then blocked. Um, I mm-hmm. tried calling. It went straight to voicemail. I sent a text like, what happened? Can you call me? Like, we could talk about this. It's not, uh, we're adults here. <laughs> in fact, like you're in high school. Um, and, you know, I assume maybe he thought I would be mad or really hurt and he's going through a lot of embarrassing things and he told me he was feeling insecure about things and he's been working on himself and but this is where it, it does get a little and like you say, I I feel like I'm playing myself because I'm comparing things here and it's very you, you make it in a nice understanding, generalized way. Um because even when you talk about like the artist and he's this like I kinda of start thinking about like a Harry Styles kind of person. You know, like that artist, that soulful musician, and this guy is nothing like that. He's like more of a nerd. Um, he's not very like he's not Mr. Suave. He's not uh, like it. it okay, once you, yes, I'm gonna, I, okay, <laughs> Rachel, I'm gonna stop you yeah. because you okay. have to, you have to stop this for yourself. Okay. If if you don't change this for yourself, you are going to have a lot of heartache and problems in your life romantically. Okay. You say you had other relationships. One of them was abusive. You've got to make a turnaround here and a big one because you are so sweet, so lovely, and you are really hurting yourself. And I I want to unpack that for you and give you some real tough love when we come back in a moment. If you've been listening to Make Him Wonder, I know you're ready for an amazing opportunity to make the rest of this year your best ever. It's why I'm so excited to announce my 8020 Wonder Club. That's right, set to launch later this summer. The 8020 Wonder Club is an exclusive club for Make Him Wonder women to get all new episodes and members only content. Yes, for less than a latte a month, as part of your membership, You'll get a labeled series for specific dating and relationship content by age and relationship status. And no more waiting. As soon as the podcast drops, it's yours. You get never before access to me to ask questions and have a multimedia library of material at your fingertips. There's so much more to come. While it's always important to make any man wonder, you won't want to miss this amazing opportunity so you know just what to do in any dating and romantic situation. As my 80th episode nears, be sure to listen for more so you don't miss out on being part of the 8020 Wonder Club. So we're back with Rachel and I was stating that I was going to give her some real tough love when we came back and I want to do that. This is super hard, but it's sometimes what we need to do when Nothing good can come from anything further with this man, barring him coming to you on bended knee with a ring. And that may sound really silly and ridiculous, kind of because it is, because that's not going to happen. Here's what I want to tell you, and I want to preface this by stating again that this has absolutely not one thing to do with you. With you not being the pretty puppy you are. With you not being wanted, desired, and even loved to some degree. Not one thing to do with any of that. So having said that, the scenario that we want to go back to. Probably there are many, many listeners, um, their hearts are going out to you and they're understanding how painful that must have been. I mean, that night when he left and uh, that morning and then the blocking and the blocking since, that's incredibly painful. 
What is your emotion around that? Oh, well, um, I cried for a week. <laughs> I felt like my uh, my stomach just dropped. Like, I just felt like I couldn't breathe. I didn't know what happened. I mean, why that? Why that extreme? It just, I think it was the fact that I could be left in the dark like that after everything. I mean, after so many years of just kind of this cat and mouse touch and go and then Almost like an unrequited love is what it felt like. And our whole goal that trip was to reconnect. Um, and we made it clear that that's what the intention was. Um, you know, I had another friend that lived in the area too, so I kind of made it clear to him that I was hanging out with her as well. So he didn't have the full, like, you know, she's coming here just for me. But it was definitely a feeling of abandonment regardless. Um and I just never thought, even with everything going on, he would be capable of doing that. And then I have that contradiction because I did the same thing to him, but I did not leave him abandoned. You know, after he made efforts, I would never do that. Um, it was out of the blue, but we hadn't established anything. It wasn't... Um, you know, I was in a relationship. It wasn't, but for this, it was definitely, uh, they say you feel like your heart's in your body, your chest, and that's definitely how it felt. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So you, of course, you felt like that, understandably so, and I don't hear any anger did you have any no surprisingly I'm not angry at all um, mm -hmm. and I'm known I get pretty hot-headed um, I can go from zero to a hundred and I usually cut people off like nothing and that's I mean you do me wrong you don't get a second chance I don't do that but I've been very understanding in this situation and um, that's why it's so hard. I don't know what, it's weird. It, it feels more like maybe that's the artsy part you're talking about that I need to realize and detach from, but it felt like our souls are more intertwined. Like even with the age gap, we've, we had so much in common. So again, tough love here. Yeah. Means nothing. Nothing. We as women have to protect ourselves. This man didn't mean to harm you in any way, shape, or form. Doesn't mean that he didn't. Mm -hmm. You have to really turn things around for yourself so that you do not allow this again. And I like the part of you that says, normally, I would cut someone off. I so hope that that is true following what he did to you. Is it? In other words, if he texted you today, what would you do? Not respond right away. I really don't know what I would do, to be honest. I guess it would depend on what the text said or what. I mean, I wouldn't just take a text. I would have to be at least a phone call or something to get a response. It wouldn't be. I mean, he'd have to be desperate. Mm -hmm. Act desperate. Do an apology. Do, I mean, show it, not just say it. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I guess it just depends. All right. So I'm going to give you a different scenario about that night, okay? Okay. So you were saying that the actions from him could be best accounted for his psoriasis or that it played a large part in him having the anxiety he had and his medical condition that he talked about. Well, you just also said that you had sex and it was normal and he wasn't, he didn't stay clothed. It wasn't a problem then, but suddenly at 3.30 in the morning, He's clutching a pillow and having an anxiety attack. What do you think could be better an account for that 
when the next day he texts you out of guilt about leaving and says, do you want to get together? You say yes, and he doesn't deign to respond, whereby you have to call him. What do you think could be going on then? And it's a classic. Um, he had a plan B? No. No, nope. think again. Classic thing that keeps men from following through, not answering their phone, and then sending a text that things are out of his control and he wouldn't be able to move forward with any of this. I am truly really stunned. I don't know. Okay, Rachel. Every woman is screaming at their device that they're listening on. Now, many will be screaming, he's married. Oh. <laughs> okay, yeah. many will be doing that. I don't know, but it is, I mean, so clear that this is about another relationship. He told you long distance doesn't work. He has never shown any indication that he wants a relationship with you. And that may be hard for you to understand. Well, why was he interacting with me at all then? Um, yes, I do see that. I do see that for sure. I guess this is where you can help me understand a little bit better here. Um, because contrary to us, like hiding, we weren't hiding at all when we went out. He actually took me to some of his um, like favorite spot where he takes his daughters and he's posted it on social media where he's kind of a regular at. So I assume if he's married, he wouldn't be doing that. He and would be trying to take me on the outskirts or somewhere he doesn't go often. Yes. Um, but he wasn't trying to hide me. He was being very um, affectionate. Very. It wasn't like he was trying to hide me or the fact that we were out together at all. Um, so that's I guess where I'm a little confused. Um, okay. Like if he had been kind of more standoffish or, hey, let's go across town. Let me take you to this place over here. Then sure. But he kept me right there in his little hometown area. So it was, it felt okay. warm and inviting. Okay. Yeah. So we don't know if, we don't, you, you can't make inferences from those things. And that's what's really maddening for us as women. Mm -hmm. Because you made inferences from things like that, which are not, um, unfortunately, indicative of anything. Because here's all manner of things that we can give as the reason why. Now, we don't know about marriage or anything. And, and I would likely err on the side that, no, he's not married, but there's definitely a relationship. Okay. Absolutely, without question, when a man does just what he did, it is why he had that anxiety attack. It has nothing to do with you, okay? He has a conscience, and that's why you like him. He tried to, whatever was going on with that other woman in the morning, here's likely what was going on, that they were on some kind of break, or he was trying to extricate himself from that relationship. Might be with something to do with the, the children's, the woman in the children's life, some way, shape, or form. I don't know, but he was trying to, and it's all messy. Mm -hmm. All messy. Why he had the anxiety attack, and things are messy and chaotic, and, and you're not doing the, you know, the right thing, and he's trying to please, trying to please this woman, trying to please you. So he, so when he gets home and things are okay, or 
whatever, and he gets in a room by himself, he texts you to hang out. And then she comes in, and now he can't, and you phone, and he can't answer the phone, and there's she finds the call on the phone. And then is when he says, he won't be able to move forward with any of this. She threatened, or whatever. It is classic. And then he blocks you for good. Not only your number on his phone, but on all social media. Because she went on his social media and like, that's it. Okay? Black and white. Simple. So, let me ask you something. When you hear this, what's, what's really the feeling in your mind or thoughts? I did kind of have doubts like that. I feel like the, you know, the mother of his children thing is a messy situation definitely as far as I'm trying to make it work or be an actual relationship I, I don't know I don't think oh he was saying some things like she's not living there um he had to kick her out uh, a couple of years back she's involved in some bad stuff she'll randomly show up at like 10 30 at night sometimes She'll leave stuff on the porch for the kids. Um, So I have a feeling maybe she did show up randomly or something happened. But as far as, you know, trying to make a relationship work uh, with what she's involved in, I really, I don't, I don't know if that's what would cause the anxiety because I don't think that's where his head is at unless she's very dramatic must, and it could have stop. you must stop maybe because it's I mean, so I painful to, <laughs> Rachel you have to stop it's so painful to even hear it's so painful mm-hmm. to even hear okay here's another thing that you, you, you must know he has shown you from the very start that there was no chance no shot nothing Mm -hmm. you went to him see it's for us as women we can thwart the pain and all of the anguish and heartbreak by sticking to what is absolutely known when a man does not pursue you will be left heartbroken. Now, you may say, oh my God, that is so black and white. Yes. It's all we need to know. It's true. Puppy principle. You're on the street and the cute puppy runs up to you so that you can, and, and wants the petting and gives you the licks and the kisses and all of it. Are you not going to accept it? If you have one at home, does it matter? No, it's still cute and wonderful. Of course you're going to accept it. Oh, no, 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 don't don't come near me. I don't want to pet you. I have a doggy at home. No, of course. It is that simple. Doesn't even mean that Neil was committed to the woman at home at all. Has nothing to do with that. I understand. Okay. Obviously, there's so much going on for him. His personal life is a mess and you were this wonderful pretty puppy that came to him and gave him a break from the the drama the problems the pressures all of it and the sex drive was was there all the chemistry all the wonderfulness and great you have sex and then it's turning into something different and the sex has been relieved and sure enough, classic, like a, like turning 
a light switch gets me anxiety for what's going to happen now. 3.30 a.m. and I'm not there. Whether living together or not, she might find out. And believe me, it blew up in his face and why he did what he did and finally said, I got I to gotta make things right so that I don't have this in my life. I got to give up pretty puppy. And he did what he did. And of course, the man, your question was, why would a man choose to detach before at least being courteous enough to be open about it? Because it's black and white. No good will come from talking to you about it. Not only will no good come from talking to you about it, he doesn't want what he believes he's going to get from any woman, and he can't even face your pain, your disappointment, your chastising, anything that could come from it. Action, not words, action. You've heard me say, men don't relate via verbalization. They relate via action. He was finally able to take that specific black and white action, and it's the best possible thing for you as well. Painful, awful, but a huge lesson for your life. Huge lesson for your life. And this isn't about what happens, I believe, that is so um, maddening, is that most women will say, oh, the lesson is there, don't trust any man. And that's not the lesson at all. The lesson is understand what our role is and what we must do from the beginning. And I'm going to take you back to the beginning in this situation to, to make the point. And that is, okay, you took a shot and you reached out to this man on Facebook. And you said some pleasantries. And that's it. And you left it. If he does not show the absolute pursuit, you know you've got nothing. And that's it. It's that black and white. Painful, not understandable. You've got it. doesn't matter. You just have to know that that's what you must do. You took the shot. That's it. And you must also know that if you don't have that upper hand, he will be so appreciative of the running up to him, metaphorically, in text, in calls, in social media, in all of it, whereby he gets the pets and the licks that he wants from the pretty puppy. A like on social media, a following him, um, any manner of texting him back and forth. It's that black and white. Harsh? Yes. Truthful? Yes. Saves us when we know it beyond a shadow of a doubt? abso Yeah, That makes sense. And I'm sorry that it does. I'm sorry for all women that it does. If only men would make their decisions out of feelings, out of love. But think how sometimes confusing it is. Um, I don't know, do you understand the puppy principle? Are you a puppy lover? I understand the puppy principle. Um, and I, I mean, yes, I'm a 
puppy lovers, but I'm also more of like a serial monogamy. So I don't really. It has nothing to do with um, monogamy. I got a puppy. It has oh. nothing to do with monogamy. It has nothing to do with it. If you've adopted a puppy, you love it, you are responsible to and for it, correct? Yes. Okay. When you see a 12 week old puppy that somebody's out walking, do you not have a feeling about it? That it's cute, you enjoy it, you like watching it lop around on the leash, and you might go up to it and talk to the owners, and maybe you'll pet it for a few moments. Mm -hmm. Because what you just said to me is that if you have a puppy at home, you're not going to ever look at another one and pet it or enjoy it or anything. Is that what you're saying? No. <laughs> no. Okay, and it's laughable. Yeah. You must understand yeah. the puppy principle like that. And depending upon the man, he will enjoy whatever in terms of puppies, meaning us. For example, and I've tested this, and you can test it by asking a man, you know, maybe your brother or a male friend or what have you. You're with a female friend, and the female friend, you say, you know, across the street in that restaurant is a, a party whereby there are 100 men. They're actually all either models or firefighters. So we could go over there and meet them and hang out. Would your single friend likely want to go? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then you say, oh, there's one caveat. They're all married. Would she then want to go? Probably not. Okay. And then you say to her, you know, across the street, they have uh, four litters of 12-week-old puppies. They're all different breeds. And we can just go and hang out. They're not even for adoption. We can just go and play with them. Would she want to go? Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So now we turn it around. And you're with your male friend. And you say to the male friend, hey, they're across the street. There's uh, four litters of 12-week-old uh, puppies. They're all different breeds. Would you want to go play with them? What do you think the man would say? Possibly. Possibly. Maybe. There's nothing else to do. Yeah, maybe. Okay. They wouldn't hurt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now we change it around and we say, across the street are 100 models, all uh, sizes, ages, all models. Would you want to go over? There's not many men there. Would you want to go over and hang out? What would he say? I'm sure he'd say yes. Okay, and then you say, oh, they're all married. What would he say? He would probably still want to go because the guys just like to look and yeah. mingle, even if it doesn't yeah. lead to anything. They just yeah. want to go be a part of it. Uh -huh. So, yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's a good example, a good way to girls assess the, um, girls are always kind of looking out for something more where guys are, their satisfactions are met visually more you're, so, I guess. You're in the moment. It doesn't matter the woman's availability. Mm -hmm. When we we are, as women, pretty puppies that must understand this for men, not make the men bad because of it. We must, because of it, protect ourselves. That's all. And from the very outset, all we need to know is if the man is not pursuing, all you will get is petted, and you give your time and your licks and your wonderfulness, and all he's doing is metaphorically going across the street and spending time with you to be around you, and that's it. It is that harsh, it is that black and white, 
It is that simple. So now that I've said that, what's in your mind? What are you thinking about this thing with Neil? When you look back over the seven years, what are you thinking? Um, definitely it's a, it's a different perspective. The metaphor you just gave um, kind of brings light to it in a different way. And, you know, I guess I can just take it for it was fun and I enjoyed my time too. And this event is more of a blessing in disguise. And right now it's still just getting over the emotional part and normalizing this new perspective. So thank you. Um, it's going to take time. I know that. Okay. So here's a caveat because one thing I don't want you to do is continue what you've been doing for the seven years. And that is giving him an out for this because you understand it. No. Um, well, what is your definition of an out? Just to be on the same. Like if he, because you asked me about him messaging me if I would reply, not how I would reply. So from what you're saying is even if he contacts me, and like you said, he better be on a bended knee with a ring pretty much to get me to respond. Um, but if he's not doing that, which we know he's not going to, should I just ignore him, block him back? I mean, that's... How I'm is so it that you've not... That. Rachel, like, Ra Rachel mm -hmm. how is it that you've not blocked him back? Like I said, I'm not mad. It's not... And, and now, now talking with you, that, that new perspective, um, it's, you know, it's settling in still. It's still... It'll take some time to normalize it here, but definitely not because I wasn't mad, so I didn't act um, in ways that I normally would. It's so not about I, being mad. It's not about being mad. It's about what's, what's unacceptable. It's about being treated in that way. You see, if you allow that kind of treatment from any man, that's what you will get, and that's what you will be relegated to. This is my worthy opponent strategy. Men don't, and, and when we think about this, I, I had a friend that always says, you know, men don't value what they should value. And I understand what she was saying. In other words, wouldn't it be wonderful if men valued that, that kind of and, and what you're showing him, that understanding, that love, that uh, caring, that being willing to work out things that the man is being troubled by and and you know here's the the, the uh, I think for you God given thing that happened because if he had been able to meet with you that morning and um, in any way tried to finagle right both sides this other woman and this other relationship and you you would have continued Correct? Right. Yeah. So look up at the stars and say, thank you. He finally did the right thing. Neil actually finally did the right thing that he should have done years and years before. But he was unhappy. He did not make a choice about another woman. He was unfulfilled. His heart was not in any of it. So he was so accepting of the love from another pretty puppy because he wasn't getting what he wanted, needed, all of it. Mm. And you understood that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you are, you embody what, what a woman is.
understanding, love, cooperation, connection, caretaking. But in the end, a man who is showing you that he is just a consumer and not in the state of a buyer, you will just get hurt. And you must show him equal action so that you don't continue to be hurt. Because here's the thing that's going to be so seriously difficult. If he were to come back into your life and continue to text you and continue to try, how are you going to ever stave that off? You're not going to be able to. And that's what I'm saying, and it, it, it can seem laughable. But unless he actually hunts you down and comes to you on bended knee, you don't have any hope in hell. And I can really say this unequivocally from the history you've given me and the amount of time. And you don't deserve any of that. Did you deserve an explanation? Yeah. But men don't do that because they don't want it. They relate via action a la sports. That's why I say we're the opponent. They only want to, quote, unquote, play at their level. Action. I do this. That's my move. You make a move. We're not going to talk about it. Two quarterbacks on the field. Think about it. One quarterback doesn't go to the other and say, hey, listen, you know, I want to make this play. I'm going to, you know, have my team do X, Y, and Z. I'm going to run. I'm going to throw the ball to this. How would you feel about that? It's laughable. They do it. That's it. That's what he did. And ultimately, it's going to save you so that you can move on. It is so painful, but it is a wonderful lesson to know that you have got to become much more of that worthy opponent saying, to any man's LeBron James, I'm going to be Steph Curry. I'm going to show him he cannot just walk onto the field and run amok. And that could have been started by initially, after you reached out, that he did all of the work. And I dare say, in his situation, you would not have gotten any of it. He told you all you needed to know. He told you long-distance relationships never work. He used something else, um, his, his medical condition, which is just laughable. Um, I wrote down some things that you had said. Uh, thought this was just for fun. Um, he actually, when you were to come to see him that last time, he was supposed to talk about expectations. Because guess what he meant to do then? He meant to do the right thing. Not talk about where we're going from here, but that it's over. You see how things can be looked at from a very different perspective? Yes. Yeah. And and how are you feeling about that in terms of, like, taking it all in and saying, wow? Definitely a wow moment. I wish I would have talked to you years ago. <laughs> it seems a lot of heartache and trouble. Um, but, yeah, the uh, I don't want to sound like I'm defending by any means, but the expectation thing was a, a text sent before the trip was supposed to happen, so that is still a little confusing. It wasn't meant to be talked about while we were hanging out. It was supposed to be beforehand. Oh. So I don't know what he would have laid out. I don't know. Mm. You know, but I think you're right that in his mind, he wanted to lay down some sort of ground something, talk about expectations, because he was saying that when he was talking about how he's been really working on himself and he wants to reach out and talk about expectations, and then he never did. We just kind of... Mm -hmm. time setting out. So I don't know, and I don't really want to even try to assume what he meant, what was going on, because like you said, he didn't do it. He didn't follow through. His actions spoke up. It really doesn't even matter mm -hmm. what it was about, but I do wish that I would have talked to you sooner. Um, 
because it would have helped with a lot of different situations that I've been in, um, that I've allowed myself to be in. So part of me feels like kicking myself in the rear, like, dang, how did I not see it so black and white? You know, you just get so, mm-hmm. that empathy, the side where you don't want to hurt somebody else, you want to be there for them and yes. not putting myself first. And I really, really love and appreciate your metaphor of the, um, you know, the, the puppies and the models and the that whole mentality of it um, and comparing men to women. And men aren't at fault. It's just, like you said, when we understand how their brains work, um, it helps, and the the laughable part to me is it's uh, it's funny how men say women are so complex and they just don't understand us. Even we when we are completely blunt about everything, they just have to look at us and they'll know. Um, but I don't see any podcasts about men trying to understand women. There's a lot out there about women trying to understand men. Though <laughs> that's the part I think is kind of uh, funny. Um, it's, uh, that's I can laughable. tell you. I can tell you why there aren't. Are there, and I'll ask you this because it's about my mechanics of men, are there podcasts for car mechanics geared towards women? No, not, well, I mean, I haven't looked, but maybe that goes into what you're saying. (laughs) Women don't really have an interest in that. And men don't have an interest in what you're talking about. They won't do anything about it. Like you said, they're more action, and it doesn't really, uh, maybe to them, they won't make a difference. And as far as they're again, men don't make sense. <laughs> no, they do. They do. And we just have to get it, and that's what I'm all about. They absolutely make sense. You know, we have, unfortunately, uh we have connoted that equal means the same. And I always say, apples and oranges are equal fruit. They are not the same, and they will never be the same. Everything related to growing an orange is completely different than growing an apple. They're completely equal fruit of equal value. They are different, and we must understand that difference and because we as women are the ones who will be most hurt it is incumbent upon us to be self-protective and I don't want that to be construed into men are bad Um, men are predators so to speak I hate the term toxic masculinity and now there's a new term um, sex positive for women meaning we'll put it all out there and show the man we're absolutely 100% uh, free and positive about sex hurts us hurts 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 and it's awful it sucks Our society sells us a bill of goods that we can look at modern drama uh, on whether it be movies, TV, podcasts, um, anything whereby they are selling, selling, selling. Everybody knows the old adage, sex sells, and the envelope is pushed every single day from advertisers and and really when we think about what is going to sell a movie what is going to sell a novel a romance novel a tv show it's got to be pushing the envelope in a way that has nothing to do with the reality of men I mean, think of all the, the, the dramas, whether it be movies, TV, uh, anything whereby the woman uh, is a ball-busting pursuer, sexy as hell, and she gets the man's love in the end. Unfortunately, good luck with that. Yeah. 
doesn't work in real life, but it makes for great movies. It's so unfortunate. We must deal with intrinsically the male and female brain. And males are not bad, and they are no more, certainly anthropologically or in a Darwinian fashion, changing how they view women and Freud's Madonna whore dichotomy, then we are in a place to change intrinsically the fact that we bond through time and sex and really attraction and love for a man. That's something change. That's born in us. And you know why it's born in us? It's, it's biological to save the species because when we, as women, are pregnant, it's the most vulnerable thing for our lives. And before our modern society, what we needed was a male around us who had put that seed in us, and he would fight off all the marauders and the animals, and he would... He would fight them off, he would bring us food, he would take care of us to ensure that that baby came into the world as healthy and as easily as possible. And then he would stay around for seven years. That's what we have in our society, the seven-year itch. Because he stayed around for seven years to protect us and the, the offspring because at seven years old was at the first age where that child could absolutely, with a probability, forage for food and make it on its own in the wild. And those things in our brains have not changed. They're just modernized. That's all. We can't buck at the existing reality of men and women. We buck the existing reality, we will be hurt. So we can't. We must go with it, understand it, and you can take, I mean, Rachel, here's the thing, you are very, very bright. You can really conceptualize so many things. When our heart is involved, it's hard to see the forest for the trees because you were uh, taking these bits of information that Neil would give you and conceptualize all in his life and his inner life and his emotions and his, his nerdiness and softness and all the things about him and, and creating this, this story. Understandable. But when I gave you a, a totally different story, you also said, hmm, that could make sense too, right? Definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You can take all that understanding and conceptualization and you can take it now and say, wow, that's a God-given thing that I have. You've, you've fostered that in your life. That'll be great for your own child. But where men are concerned, if you start to be black and white, either a man steps up and does what is necessary. I'm not even going to say expected. No, necessary. And all that is, is he does all the pursuit so that you know. And many of you out there will be thinking, well, most of them don't. And I would say, you're right. You're right. If in your lifetime of being single, yeah, most all men will not. They will be consumers for you. But you are only looking for that one and the one who will show you 
And many times you can take a consumer and actually, by your action of making him go up the scale to being a buyer, he will. In this case, I can tell you and why I don't want you to be kicking yourself, Rachel. In this case, you didn't have a hope in hell of doing that. And not because of you. And not because you weren't a pretty puppy enough. The circumstances, the situation, who he is, what was happening in his life, all of it, you did not have any hope of doing it. I hope that makes you feel better. Yes, it, it, it does. Thank you. It, um, it helps me feel like it wasn't wasted time and um, things aren't a mistake when there's a lesson learned. So mm-hmm. I, I love that. feel like there's, yeah, I definitely feel like there's been a lesson learned for me and I am starting to think about the future now. And, you know, I have um, three daughters, so this is definitely some wisdom to pass down to them. Um, I am their main role model, so I'd like to show them strength, and it's about learning just, I guess that's where I'm, you know, how to be a, a, a strong woman, not afraid to show what she wants, but also not giving everything she has, it's kind of learning how to toss the bait if you're interested and seeing if the man will even take it. I mean, I don't know if that kind of makes sense at how I'm mm-hmm. kind of, um, I'm processing this as more of like a fishing metaphor. Like a woman can be interested, you throw the fishing line out, not to see whoever catches it, but there's one specific fish you want. And if he doesn't, then you move on to the next one, I guess. Like, I, I don't know. Maybe that's not the best metaphor. I'm trying to I think. <laughs> like, how do you, I, like, how do you... Wait, 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 wait. I love that metaphor. It's a great one. And I love the fact that you say, I want to be a role model for my daughters. Because let me tell you, unfortunately, most all of us were not taught any of this. Mm -hmm. And you can change us. (laughs) You can change a cycle. If you weren't taught it, there is nothing more valuable for your daughter's life than this. Nothing. I don't care what education, uh, money, it, none of it matters. This is huge. It will save them so much if they really get it. Because I don't have the best history of relationships, as we're talking about. Um, and my thing is I've been told um, by men before that I'm a bit intimidating um, and so I've, I guess, just through my dating process and history, I've learned that I, if I don't make my intentions clear that I like somebody, they don't pursue. So it's hard for me to find that balance of throwing the bait and then letting them do the work. Um, because if I'm intimidating, they're not going to do the work out of fear of being objected. So... How do you balance that? Like, what do you have any tips, like, um, or a new perspective for me to look at things? Or mm-hmm. that's where I'm a bit confused. Okay. So this is where most all of the work that I do with my clients comes in. This is the work because this cannot be turned around overnight and with the simple tips, so to speak. It's a process of you becoming and you understanding vis-a-vis each man that you get involved with, how it's working for him. And here's an overview. Uh, When you're hearing that you are intimidating, is that the word they actually use for you, Rachel? Yes, um, they actually, I mean, I'm approachable because they'll come and talk to me, but when it comes to, um, you know, asking me out or coming up to me, like it's more of a, 
I don't know. I'm thinking too much into it, but yes, they um, they say intimidating, but I'm approachable, so I don't understand how where that line is drawn for them. Okay, so because I'm not hearing from you, I hear a softness. I hear an you know an accepting personality, very sweet. Um, you are just lovely. You're not in any way off-putting. Now, that may have to do with uh, a couple of things. Um, one may be that you're very smart. The other, in combination, might be that you're very attractive and high up on the scale of attractiveness. Is that about right? I've heard that. Um, you know, as a woman, we don't really view ourselves that way usually, but I have heard that, yes. Okay. So, well, you need to view yourself like that because it's likely the case. And here's what happens with that. That, and I call it um, the man being the peacock. And I actually have a test in one of my programs where you can test yourself against the man that you're with, whether or not he feels himself to be a peacock, a pheasant, uh, a pelican, or a pigeon. And likely, for example, um, someone like Neil, if you can understand this, did not feel himself to be a peacock. He was more around, around you, a pelican or a pigeon. And a man wants to feel like he is the peacock. He is the bird with the beautiful feathers, as the male bird is in the peacock family. And you as the woman, you're there and you've got the brown feathers and are not the showy one that has the kind of attention and the upper hand. And I don't mean that just in terms of looks at all, because one woman's peacock is another woman's pigeon. But I think what I'm hearing, and when I hear that about men telling you those types of things, is that... All he's saying is that he doesn't feel like a peacock when around you. That's all. So each particular man, if you're getting that from him in action or word, he doesn't feel like a peacock. And unfortunately, there's nothing a woman can really do about that. Because if you try to bolster him up to be a peacock, it doesn't work. It just makes him feel more of a lesser bird, like the pheasant, the pelican, the pigeon. Mm -hmm. This means that you are surrounding yourself, maybe, and I don't know, but with men who are um, not, not peacocks for you. And this is tough. This is really tough. And again, it's, it, it necessitates work that is sometimes antithetical to what we would think the work is about, but it's what I do with women in my programs because it's very important. And I don't know if you're dating now. Are you dating? No. Or has it just been too difficult with this? Because I know your heart has been with Neil for a very long time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, trying to move on and stuff. And it just, mm -hmm. like, he had a special place, I think. And, but it's learning to um, kind of readjust that and take in a different perspective on it to where mm -hmm. I stopped thinking that way. I don't think he has a special place anymore. It's more of a, he was renting it, and now he's getting evicted. So <laughs> Excellent. Um, yeah. 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 Yeah, and, and what's really hard paying his rent, so he can't live there. <laughs> what's really hard is when you know that they're not bad; they're just damaged. Mm -hmm. He's a damaged consumer. If you've read my book, he's a damaged consumer. Okay, that's all. And me being empathetic and being a woman and nurturing and um, wanting to help, like you mentioned with your three C's. Uh, I want to be there for him, and I understand that he's damaged, not to what level, but it makes me want to reach out more and make me pursue, and that's where I need to read his signs like you've made very clear and not do that, not have that need or that 
pull toward them. So mother your girls and not at all mother a man emotionally. It never does us any good when we have someone who's not the peacock to try to help. It doesn't make the man feel manly or more of a man. He'll just go and find his pigeon. That's another unfortunate. And again, there are always exceptions to the rule, but I'm saying gross generalization. And we as women need to think of ourselves as exceptional women, but not the exception to the rule. Because when we think of ourselves as the exception to the rule is when we will most likely be hurt. That's true. So I hope this was helpful for you today. Yes, very helpful. Thank you. Absolutely. Another great discussion. Did you hear Rachel kind of come alive there with some new insights and recognition? It's really what it's all about. And it's so important to, to get a different perspective when you are feeling stuck especially after something really traumatic, such as a ghosting incident, what happened to Rachel after seven years back and forth. And yes, what she said is so true. If she had found me or someone like me to be able to give her that perspective earlier on, how valuable that would have been in order not to waste her valuable time. Speaking of your valuable time, I love that you are all here and you're still listening. After that lengthy discussion, that's a really good thing because we've gotten to a point in our society like, let's just get the tips and let's cut to the chase. And unfortunately, our minds don't work like that. It's through repetition that we learn everything and where we get the most growth. And that's what I'm all about with my new 8020 Wonder Club. So making wonder is still going to continue, albeit there will only be a few times per year that you will get new episodes. In season two, of Make Him Wonder, you will get new episodes, albeit if you are just listening via your regular listening way, which you are right now in season one, you'll just get it a few times a year. However, if you join the 8020 Wonder Club, you will be able to get episodes immediately as they come out and, you know, more binge listen. All the new episodes, and you also get other really helpful material, the content that is so valuable for you to really know and really remind yourself about. Like, for example, I go into and provide you multimedia content for uh, Madonna Horror Dichotomy, Consumer versus Buyer, Puppy Principle. You get the Peacock Test. You get my gender gaps. You This premium membership is really going to be a go-to place for you to have resources, assistance, uh, really help you on your journey. So I hope you will check all of that out, the 8020wonder.club. I will put a link in the description. I'm going to make sure that is exactly right and put the link in the description. And you can go and get all the information on it. And the low monthly membership fee. And you'll be able to log on anytime and get what you need. Be reinforced and get that repetition so you have the insights a la the, the leaps that women can make like Rachel with just a little help a little perspective. So I look forward to that. 
And I look forward to helping you in Season 2 by reminding you always that with any man in your life, you have to make him wonder. If you've benefited from today's conversation, please subscribe and share. Connect with Coach Paula at MakeHimWonder.com. There you can take several relationship evaluations, discover her books and other resources, and find out if one of her personalized coaching programs might be right for you.